uh, very, uh, climate forcings. That's the solar insulation. It's natural uh, components of the uh, atmosphere. And so that includes uh, volcanic eruptions, other aerosols, dust, things like that, and changes in insulation. And then we run the model where we add the greenhouse gases, the CO2, the methane. Okay. And here is a plot showing uh, temperature, ocean heat content, and uh, basically it's temperature and ocean heat content in various um, uh, land masses, various ocean basins, and then global average. And the key point here is in each of these plots, the black is the observations, and the pink is with the uh, anthropogenic carbon dioxide and methane, and the blue is with only the natural forcings, right? And so after 1950 to 1960, the only way you can match the actual observations is if we include the CO2, the anthropogenic greenhouse gases into the model. And that's, fair, that's consistent among all these areas, and globally it's even more obvious. Okay? And so that's how we attribute that at least since 1950, about 50% of the warming is due to anthropogenic carbon dioxide and methane. Okay, so now looking for projections of sea level and acidification into the future, we have to talk about what we call representative concentration pathways. So these are, we have to make assumptions about what carbon dioxide is going to do in the future. Okay? We could leave it at where it is right now, which is essentially what this green line is, is that we don't really increase it much more over the next coming decades. Or we could continue growing as we have been, and that's kind of this red line here. So this is sometimes called the business as usual type curve, and this is kind of if we start really cutting back on greenhouse gases in the next uh, couple of decades. Right? There's a lag. Even if we cut back, it will still rise for a little bit and then start to drop off. And so these are the various uh, scenarios that are run in the climate models to predict what will happen. Uh, generally, we'll look at the range between the lowest, which is really the most optimistic, and then this one, which is, you know, if we just keep doing what we're doing today. Right? And so. Here are some of the projections. I'm not going to list all of them. You can read the document. I want to talk specifically about sea level and ocean acidification. And the way we do the sea level is it's not just running the climate model. Because one of the problems with the last assessment was what to do about the ice sheets. The last assessment did not include dynamical responses of the ice sheets to global warming. Okay? They just assume that there would be no d dynamical response. They have what are called surface mass balance models, which are precipitation minus melting at the surface. Those we have pretty good models of, and you can put the temperature changes in there and see what the surface mass balance is going to do. But the other component that causes the ice sheets to lose mass is the glaciers, if they're losing mass discharging ice into the ocean if they're speeding up and discharging more ice into the ocean. We have very poor models of that, especially to predict future climate change. So one of, the go one of the things that was done for this assessment is several groups were working on uh, kind of order of magnitude uh, possibilities of dynamic ice response based on what we know that ice can do over periods of time that we've observed. And that was added from the last assessment, okay? And that's why the projections are n nominally bigger than they were from the last assessment. If you took out that dynamical response of ice, the projections of sea level rise from this pr uh, assessment would almost be identical to what it was in the last uh, assessment. And that's this uh, red curve right here. I just put that in there. So the last assessment had at a maximum uh, possibility of about 50 centimeters of sea level rise, half a meter by the end of uh, this century. But if we look at the business as usual case now, uh, 
it's up to almost a meter. It's just under a meter. It's like 0.98 centimeters. And that's the high end. If we go at the low end, it's still higher than 50 centimeters, right? And if you're really, really optimistic and think that we can take out carbon dioxide from the atmosphere or not put more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, we're still higher than we were from the last assessment report. So it's going to be somewhere from about 30 centimeters to almost 60 centimeters. And that's mainly from the ice. Okay? In this assessment, we actually made patterns of sea level rise. We tried to estimate the patterns of sea level rise based on the warming of the ocean from climate models and also the patterns that will develop because of the ice melting. So one thing you'll notice is that in areas where you have ice melting, Greenland, Antarctica, you actually have less sea level rise than you do elsewhere in the ocean, and that's a gravitational effect. You see other patterns in here which are related to changes in the circulation that are driven by uh, in the climate models. But overall, there's going to be a rise over, I think it's, 70 or 80 percent of the uh, world's coastlines are going to be within the global mean of sea level. It's very limited areas where you're actually going to see a lower sea level rise than this area, this uh, value right here. And Florida is right about the average. Okay, so if you want to predict where you're going to be 100 years from now, this is a fair number if you're in Florida. Uh, Acidification, the oceans are going to continue to acidify as more carbon dioxide uh, is, is put into the atmosphere because they will still be able to absorb CO2. Uh, these are for the two RCP values here. Uh, uh, I don't know what these numbers are, sorry. Uh, but you can see uh, here's where we are right now. And if we continue along, even with the reduced one, it will continue to acidify at least for the next 10 or 20 years, and then it may stabilize. And if we continue putting carbon dioxide at the rate we are now into the atmosphere, it will continue to go down even further. And then these are patterns and maps, and as you see, there is some uh, relative distribution of it, but it is very global. Most places are going to be acidifying at the same level as they are uh, anywhere else. Um, other projections, the ocean is going to warm, and these models do suggest that the AMOC will slow down, possibly starting in 2050. Um, there are ranges here from 1 to 24 percent to maybe up to 12 to 54 percent. Again, some of these models are already predicting the AMOC should have slowed down, so I, I don't know if I really trust this as much as uh, other people do. But this is the statement made by the, the chapters that are responsible for that. And that's because of the ice melting in Greenland? That is the one thing that, that and wind changes would be the things that would be driving it. That's all that they can model in the, in the models, yeah. But the, the, the ice is already melting in Greenland, but it doesn't seem to have any effect on the amount. Yeah. At this point. But if more and more goes into it, then it will have a stronger and stronger effect. Uh, so anyway, I want to close by thanking my co-authors on the chapter. Here we are, a nice, happy group. <laughs> this was in Tasmania at the last meeting, and we're all happy because we thought that this was the last time that we would be working on this. But of course, a few of us had to go to the Stockholm meeting and continue working. But it was a great group of people. I'm glad. I, I only knew a couple of them beforehand, and I really respect all of them. They're a great team of oceanographers and it was a, a fun group to be with. Kent may recognize uh, a couple of yeah. 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 Um, and uh, as far as I know, our chapter is the only one with an official haiku. Uh, <laughs> Greg, Greg Johnson was our uh, poet laureate and he, c he composed this. He thought really, really hard about this. Uh, I, I'm Facebook friends with Greg, too, and every single one of his posts is in a haiku, so it's always fun to read. 
Uh, and I'll let you read that. And it, I think it really summarizes uh, what we found in, in the chapter. Um, and I'll close with this. If you want to read the report, the technical summary, the policy for the summary for policymakers, it's all here. Freely available. You can download it, read it to your heart's content. Every plot that every picture I showed in here is in the document with a lot more supporting evidence. There's no way that I could go through all the supporting evidence in this brief of a time. All right, so with that, I'll take any more questions. Yeah, Bob.